In a previous video, we turned this Dell small form factor Optiplex 5070, no, not that 5070, into a gaming PC by adding in a super slim, low profile RTX 3050 that doesn't require any additional power connectors at all. This allowed us to play pretty much any game at 1080p and even some at 1440p. But what if you wanted to be able to plug in any low profile graphics cards and not just single slot ones? Well, in today's video, I'm going to connect the most powerful, low profile GPU you can currently buy. This is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5060 Low Profile from Gigabyte. It's a low profile dual slot graphics card, and because of Dell's dumb and probably intended design, you can only fit this card in the top X4 slot and not the X16 slot at the bottom. There are a few reasons why you may want to put a dual slot GPU with extra power connectors into your Dell Optiplex, but the main reason for me is choice. There are very few cards which are both low profile and single slot. Not to mention, if you find one that is, you will probably expect to pay a premium. Additionally, if your card requires any external power connectors, then you're out of luck. Or you might be able to use one of those weird adapters and probably have your PC blow up. By doing this modification, we can put in any dual slot graphics card into our PC with up to two 8-pin PCIe power connectors. So this is what we're going to need. We're going to be using a new power supply to replace the existing Dell PSU, as it does not have the required GPU connectors, it's way too low wattage at just 200 watts, and it takes up way too much space. Then we will need a low profile dual slot GPU. This is an RTX x5060 low profile but you can use any. Finally we just need an adapter for the 24 pin power connector because Dell likes to have weird proprietary ports on their PCs. In the box of the RTX 5060 we get a low profile bracket, our graphics card and some instruction booklets. Side by side to the single slot low profile RTX 3050 we can see that the 5060 is slightly longer and much thicker but it also has a triple fan design which should help a bit with the thermals. On the card we have plenty of video ports including three display ports and one HD HDMI port, and it is powered by a single 8-pin PCIe power connector. For specs, the Gigabyte RTX 5060 has 3840 CUDA cores, it has a core clock of 2512 MHz, 8GB of GDDR7 memory, PCIe 5.0 X8, which we obviously won't be utilizing with this old Dell Optiplex, and it has a TDP of 145 watts, and they recommend a PSU of 550 watts. You could probably get away with a lower wattage, but we have a 600 watt PSU for this PC just in case. So as you can see, our our dual slot low profile graphics cards can fit in the top X4 slots with minimal clearance between the power supply. But in order to get more performance, we're going to plug this into the X16 slot at the bottom, meaning the power supply has to come out. So we're going to move the disk drive to the side and unplug the 6 pin and 4 pin power connectors from the PSU, and then we're going to unscrew the power supply and then slide it out. For our new power supply, we have this 600 watt flex PSU from Julong Fun Bao. This is just an AliExpress PSU I got for around £35 or $47 using some discount codes. Is it the best power supply out there? Probably not. But then again, it's way cheaper than the other flex power supplies you can get from like Silverstone, which could set you back hundreds. Flex power supplies are usually used in servers, but they have the exact same connectors like your 24 pin and your 8 pin CPU connectors. So we can use it for a normal PC. The PSU is fully modular and has all the additional power connectors we need, like the 8 pin PCIe power connector for our GPU. It is a bit questionable using this PSU, especially after looking at some of the reviews online. But for our cheap Dell Optiplex, I think we should be fine because we won't be drawing anywhere near the maximum 600 watts of power. As you can see this power supply is about the same width but it's much shorter so we have more clearance for our graphics card. Our flex PSU is obviously not the same as the Dell power supply before so it doesn't really screw into place. So I'm going to bend this piece of metal out of the way so we can plug in our power cable and then I'm going to plug in our cables before installing it into the PC with cable ties. We also need to connect our 24 pin to 6 pin Dell converter alongside our 4 pin CPU connector. And I'm going to tuck as much of the cabling under the disk drive as physically possible. Cable ties probably isn't the best way to hold this PSU down, but it actually works quite well considering you can't really screw it in as none of the holes line up. The PSU doesn't really move about and it's held in pretty securely. Now due to the position of the PCIe expansion slots, we can't plug our dual slot GPU into the bottom slot with our low profile bracket on. So you can either cut the PC case around the edge or just remove the bracket altogether. I just removed the bracket altogether and the graphics card is actually held on pretty well due to the slot and the case on the side, so the graphics card isn't going anywhere.
Now we can find out if our Dell PC starts up or just explodes. And it looks like we're good. So we'll just install all the drivers and in Nvidia's software, we can see we have our RTX 5060 installed. Now we can play some games. 3D Mark Time Spy gives us a graphics score of 13,187 and a CPU score of 5,327. Clearly our i5-9500 is pretty outdated to be paired with an RTX 5060. However, if we compare that result with our score with the RTX 3050, you can see our graphics score has almost doubled what we had before. So our modifications to our Dell PC have really given it a big performance boost. In GTA 5 at the highest settings 1080p, we get 113.9 FPS on average, but our graphics card usage was only at 50%. In comparison, we got only 101.3 FPS with the 3050. Where the difference becomes noticeable is when we turn the game up to 1440p. Here we were still averaging 113.4 FPS, whereas the 3050 struggled to keep 70 FPS. We could even turn on MSAA x8 at 1440p and we were getting 78.8 FPS on average, which is really, really good. The game was very smooth throughout with a 1% low of 58 and a 0.1% low of 55.5 FPS. As for the temps, we were reaching 70 to 80 degrees, which is pretty high, and the sound of the fans were quite loud. But this is to be expected as we have a pretty small clearance between the GPU and power supply. Additionally, the RTX 5060 is more powerful so it will generate more heat despite having a much better cooling solution consisting of three fans and a thicker heatsink. Closing the PC case increases the temperature slightly but actually dampens the sound by quite a bit. On to another Rockstar game, Red Dead Redemption 2 at ultra settings 1080p we got 73.8 FPS on average which is really really good. To put that into comparison, before our 3050 in the same PC got only 32.7 FPS. We can even turn the game up to 1440p at ultra settings which is something we couldn't do on the RTX 3050 as the FPS was way too low. Here we get 65.3 FPS on average with a 1% low of 38.1 and a 0.1% low of 22.4 FPS. I could easily play this game on this PC at these settings. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at the highest preset 1080p achieved 97.1 FPS. The RTX 3050 only got 66.8 FPS here. At 1440p our FPS barely even took a hit with the RTX 5060. It decreased to 93.5 FPS whereas the RTX 3050 could only get 44.8 FPS on average here. In Spider-Man Remastered we could have the game on very high settings at 1080p to get 81.2 FPS on average. At 1440p our FPS decreased to 66.2 FPS on average which is still more than playable. There was a little bit of stuttering as shown by the 1% and 0.1% low being at 27.9 and 17.4 FPS here. But overall the game was great to play. I first tried out Forza Horizon 5 at the same settings as when we had the RTX 3050 inside our PC. But our FPS was really high at 137 FPS on average. That's more than double what we got with the RTX 3050. So I turned the settings up to the extreme preset 1080p. Here we got 110.1 FPS on average which is great and you could turn on MSAA if you wanted better quality. At 1440p extreme settings we were still getting 95.9 FPS on average. The game at 1440p was very smooth throughout, not dipping below 43 FPS at the worst. Resident Evil 3 at very high settings, 1080p was getting 217.1 FPS on average and that's very very playable. We could turn up the resolution to 1440p to get 143.1 FPS and even to 4K where we were still getting 69.8 FPS on average. Resident Evil 3 usually runs quite well on most hardware and it's no exception here. In Cyberpunk at high settings 1080p our RTX 5060 got 99.3 FPS whereas before with our RTX 3050 we only got 58.9. So we can put this game to ultra where we get 92.7 FPS at 1080p and 61.7 FPS at 1440p. Since we have an RTX card I tried some ray tracing with the ray tracing ultra preset, no resolution scaling and we were getting 28.9 FPS on average. That's mostly playable but it's not really the best. Esports titles like CS2 work really well. Here we have the game at the high preset 1440p and we're getting 135.2 FPS on average. In esports titles having a good amount of FPS is ideal so we could turn down the resolution or settings here to get even more FPS. So our Chinese power supply looks like it held up pretty well. If you were using higher end components then it could be a good idea to get a flex PSU from a better brand but for our cheap Dell Octuplex it works great. The RTX 5060 is most definitely being held back by our PC, as an i5-9500 is quite an outdated CPU, with only support for PCIe 3.0. That means we are limited to PCIe 3.0 x16, but even worse than that is the RTX 5060 supports PCIe 5.0 x8, so we're actually going to be limited to PCIe 3.0 x8. 
This video is more to show you how you can put a dual slot GPU that requires more power into a small form factor Dell Optiplex, as Dell Optiplexes tend to be quite similar for the newer versions. The RTX 5060 costs like $350, and the Dell PC only costs like $150 or less. So there are definitely better combinations of GPUs and PC parts out there. Thanks for watching.